Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, the number one wholesaling podcast on the planet. My name is Brent Daniels, and it is my pleasure to be on this podcast with you guys today. I have a phenomenal, phenomenal friend and guest uh, on from Houston. Uh, I will introduce him in a second. Actually, I'll introduce him now. His name is Chris Silvis. Say hi, Chris. What's up, guys? Him and his partner, Tony, are doing phenomenal business coming out of Houston, but they're doing it all over the country, and we're going to touch on that in just a bit, but I wanted to start off with my podcast thought for this episode. The thought I have here is how many um, pre-qualified appointments are you setting every single week? How many pre-qualified appointments are you going on every single month? Now, here's the thing. Appointments are great, but you know what's 10 times better than appointments? Pre-qualified appointments every single time. And we know that the pre-qualified appointments means that you base it on the four pillars of pre-qualifying. And Chris knows that as well as I do. It is condition, it is timeline, it is motivation, and it is price. And I'm telling you, the more of those pre-qualifying that you get out of the way, the better your appointments are going to be, the more advanced agreements that you can have with the seller before you go on the appointment, basically getting an upfront contract from them before you even go to the house. It is so incredible or even see the house like, like Chris and Tony do. So, I mean, it's just getting the pre-qualifying out of the way is absolutely critical every single time you have to do it every single time. And what I find with a lot of the students or a lot of the people that I talk to around the country is the hardest thing to get out of them. The hardest question to ask is about the price because, you know, sellers are kind of like they're programmed, right? They're programmed to, to, to prevent us from, know, from, from knowing what their, their secret number is or what they want for the house. They want us to throw it out there for them. So I'm going to give you a couple pieces of advice. Okay, this is something that has been huge in our business, huge for me personally. Uh, it's two things. The first thing is you have to go in with the mentality of this. You have to say to yourself, I am, I am financially independent and I don't need the business. Okay. Now this is just a mindset thing. This doesn't, this doesn't uh, stop you from being hungry. This doesn't stop you from being passionate for solving people's problems in the marketplace. All this is doing is putting you in a headspace that says, I am emotionally detached from the answer that they're going to give me. And because of that, I can talk about money, right? It's not this weird thing. I can talk about price. I can ask that question so that I can get it out of the way so that I can know if it's a deal or not a deal and how big of a deal it is even more importantly. So that's the first thing. The other thing is I want you to tweak your script a little bit when you're asking for the price. Okay. And I wrote it down here just so that I got it absolute perfectly, but we've been using it in my business and it has been a game changer. The, the way that it, the question goes is, would you mind sharing, right? That sharing word is so vital. Would you mind sharing with me the ballpark price you would need for the home? Right. So you're sharing, you know, you're not how much would you want for the home? How much are you thinking? What do you think the house is worth? No. How would you mind sharing with me the ballpark price you need for the home? Not want, need. So that's a couple tips right off the bat that I hope that you guys can implement right away. I want you going on pre-qualified appointments every single day, every week. The more you go on, the more you, the more appointments you go on or the more pre-qualifying, even if you're like Chris and Tony here that are superstars in a virtual space, you know, doing deals over the phone in different markets. And we'll get to that in a second, but you, you have to get all of those pre-qualifying out of the way so that you know if you've got a deal and you know who to spend the most time with. So it's absolutely critical. I talk about it on this podcast a lot, but it is huge, 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 especially when you're starting out, especially when you're new to get those four pre-qualifying because when you start out, everything seems like a deal. Somebody just talking nicely to you seems like a deal. Somebody that doesn't slam the phone or yell at you or scream at you, you're, you get so excited. But remember in that excitement, make sure that you are putting in the work. You're, you're, you're being business minded here and you're getting the pre-qualifying. That's what the superstars do. That's what Chris and Tony do. So with that, let me let me bring into this conversation. Let me let this conversation just get taken over by Mr. Chris Silvas. How are you doing, buddy? What's up, Brent? I am blessed, man. I'm happy to be here with the TTP man himself. <laughs> That's right, man. So tell me. So you are in Houston, and you are partnered with uh, Tony. Is Tony your cousin, brother? What? Yes. Yeah. He couldn't be here today. 
Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, um, and how long have you guys been, um, you know, doing in the wholesale business or in the real real estate business in in, in general? Yeah, about uh, just under two years. Got it. Okay. So, um, what did you guys do before this? Uh, so, in a in a former life, <laughs> um, I was a CPA working uh, corporate America. Get out of here. I, I keep I keep my my license active, sure. uh, but um, don't don't use it much. <laughs> got it, got it. And what is the most that you could make in a year as a CPA? Um, you know, depending on setting. Um, but you know, if you're kind of up the ranks, you're you're kind of towards the top. Uh, you know, I mean, between seventy five and a hundred grand. Okay, got it. Seventy five. You know, say that again. Just just ball, super ballpark. Sure. Sure. Okay. And um, so you're being a CPA. You're going about your life. Do you have a family? Do you have kids? Do you have a house? Do you have dogs? What? Tell me about you. Yeah. Yeah. And Brent, I'm sorry, man. I I, I really need to. You know, I'm I'm very strong in my faith, and and I just wanted to take a half a second and just you know give God all the glory. You know, thank Him for everything that's that's happened. We've just been super blessed, and um, I just got to give thanks to the big man upstairs because this this you know we've we've had our lives changed. Yep. Absolutely. I love that. And thank you for taking the time to do that. That is, uh, I love it. So tell me about you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I have a, a wife, a beautiful wife and uh, two little kids. One, uh, my son is uh, just about to be two years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter is uh, just over four months. Got it. So um, our, our house is crazy. <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, it's, I mean, I want to also just give thanks to my, my wife and, and my family just, you know, they've supported us so much, uh, on the dream, you know, and, um, you know, there, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. I love that. So you're telling me right before your uh, first child was born, you changed professions or did you kind of, did you do both? Was, was, was wholesaling kind of your side hustle or your like, you know, <clears throat> your, your passion, but not your profession type of thing. Like how did that work out? How did you transition? Yeah. So, so, um, Tony, Tony and I were talking one day and, and I got to give Tony the credit. I mean, and he just said, he, he, he came up with this silly idea, this silly notion that, that homeowners would sell their houses for 40 and 50 cents on the dollar. Uh -huh. And I pretty much told him, you've had too much to drink and you need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, you know, so, you know, we, we started talking a little bit more and finally one day just taking action, right? Yep. Uh, we bought some yellow pads. We bought some, some pens. We bought a box of envelopes and some stamps, and we just hit the ground, man. We we started mailing pre foreclosures, and uh, before you know it, we had somebody interested. Really? So you were just mail? You were just doing handwritten notes to them? Oh yeah, R right until my hand cramped up at night, Brent. <laughs> sure. And was it just pre foreclosures in Houston? Yeah. So we we started off in our backyard, uh, you know, just mailing everybody we could, but. You know, we'll talk about it later, but, you know, Houston's like 100 miles long by 100 miles wide. So mm -hmm. it can get very time consuming jumping from appointment to appointment. Sure. Sure. And um, when you were first, so you would write these letters saying, basically, I want to buy your property. Here's my number. They would call you up. Did you get nervous when you got these calls? Did you let it go to voicemail? Did you call them right back? Did you call everybody back? Like, how did you, what were your emotions going like for everybody out there that's just starting out and they've never really talked to a motivated seller, let alone any sellers. Maybe they're not in real estate or they've never sold real estate or whatever, but they're getting started. Like, how did that feel? What was the emotions behind getting those first calls? Oh man, it was horrible, Brent. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, initially I would let it go to voicemail, but then I started realizing like you, some of these guys, you only got one shot and when they call you, you better answer mm -hmm. the phone. Um, you know, that took some learning, but I mean, we would we would get on the phone and, and fumble and bumble through words and just spew out, you know, vocabulary that I had just looked up. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I realized pretty quickly that, you know, people are people. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you can just have a conversation with them and, and, and you know, see if you can help them out, it things just go a lot smoother. Like, don't try to be somebody you're not, mm -hmm. you know, just talk to them, see what kind of problems they have and, and, and try and solve their problems. That's what, that's why we make money, right? We solve problems for people. That's it. And I think that's such an important point 
uh, that, that Chris made is that it's not about you. It's not about you talking about how great you are, how much money you have, or how much you can buy their property, or you know all these other things, and you pumping yourself up. It's just asking them questions and seeing if there's a problem that you can solve. If there's not a problem that you can solve, that's not a deal. There's no value that you can provide there. So I mean, when it when it comes down to it, sure you get that nervousness. You get kind of like a watery stomach, and you, you kind of get a little bit anxious and, and jittery a little bit when those first calls come in. So I'll just let them go to voicemail. I'll hear their tone of voice. I'll make sure that they're okay and nice and safe. And then I'll call them back, right? This is a natural progression of things. But if you just take those calls live, remember, it's like if you, if you're, um, if, if you had a, a pipe, a pipe burst in your house, or you had, you know, something bubbling up from your, from your bathroom, or, you know, your water heater explodes, you're going to call a plumber. And the first plumber that can come and be there is who you're going to go with. That's how some of these people are. That's how desperate these situations are. So you got to answer as many as you can live, get back to people as quickly as possible. And I'm telling you, the more people you talk to, the more comfortable you get and the more skills you build and the, the better questions you uh, can ask. That's what I mean by skills. The skills come from the questions you ask, the tone that you use, and making sure that you're, you're listening to the things that, that, that maybe other people can't pick up on when it comes to why they want to sell the property. So, Absolutely. so, okay. So you're, you're licking stamps, you're putting, you're putting the mail in, you're writing the, the you're writing on yellow pads. What is the evolution from there? Yeah. So, uh, we went on a few appointments, bunch of duds, uh, you know, like Brent said, you know, pre-qualify these guys, four pillars, four pillars, four pillars. My entire team knows about four pillars. It's pounded in their head. Sure. Uh, sure. But um, yeah, I mean, hey, would you rather have 10 layups or 10 three-pointers, right? Which, how many more are going to go in? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, so, so we got a guy finally that was interested, uh, went out there. And I mean, <laughs> you, you know how it is, Brent. I mean, you know, I'm acting like, you know, I'm acting like I know more about construction and housing than I really do. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sitting there pointing out things that are not relevant to anything, you know, uh, uh, that baseboard is out of code, you know, we're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So, but uh, when, it, when it got down to it, we, we, we started talking a little bit and kind of definitely felt his pain. I mean, he was getting foreclosed on in a, about a month or so. So we, we were just talk through the problems. Um, I went back, uh, ran the numbers, did my due diligence, called him up and, um, you know, fumbling and bumbling, trying to get that number out. And it was basically like two grand above his payoff just so he could have some moving uh, money. The house needed a lot of work. So and, 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 you know, just like everybody's first time, you throw out the number and you're like, you know, just, just yeah. like, yeah. this, what you're going to say. Uh, and, and lo and behold, the guy was just like, OK. And, and I'm like. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and uh, it was just too easy. So then I was just saying, you know, OK, well, I'm going to write up the contract. That's next. <laughs> and I'm just almost telling myself. Uh, but uh, so we, we went ahead and drew up the contract and, and you you kind of put the timelines together uh, when I started looking for somebody to assign the property to um, was around the time my son was born. Um, <laughs> So I was actually at the hospital. My wife had just had our son and I'm sitting there on my laptop drawing up an assignment contract uh, for for this deal. So, I mean, it was uh, it was awesome. Um, it, it was just such a learning experience. So many mess ups. But from that point, Brent, mm -hmm. man, it's hard to get anything else inside my brain other than wholesaling. I love it. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, that's. <laughs> That's crazy. I haven't heard of anybody sending an assignment, uh, you know, with a freshly newborn in a hospital. So that is incredible. But uh, how exciting, on, you know, on all levels. Uh, but why, why pre foreclosures? Why did you target pre foreclosures? What was the thought there? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we've obviously evolved and, and, and learned a lot more about data and, and, you know, motivations and different levels and different avenues. Uh, but up front, I mean, we didn't really know a lot. Right. And, and, and so our quick conclusion just shooting from the hip was, well, these guys are going to lose their house in, in Texas. All you need is 21 days public notice. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are going to lose their house. There's some motivation there. <laughs> Let's see if we can talk to a few people. So that was really the only rhyme and reason why we picked pre foreclosures. Mm -hmm. 
That's incredible. 21 cool. days. That's crazy. Here in Phoenix, it's 90 days. That's a huge difference. What a, what a, what a, um, yeah, that is super stressful for those homeowners in, in Texas. That's crazy. So, um, so you, you keep targeting a pre foreclosures. How do you, how do you even get the data for that? I mean, how would you even know that they're in pre foreclosure? Yeah, so in, in, in Texas, there's a public notice, uh, a notice of, of, of trustee sale or, you know, notice of foreclosure sale um, posted at least 21 days. Some of them will do it more than 21 days, but at least 21 days uh, in Texas on the first Tuesday of every month is when um, the sales happen, the, the fourth sales. Um, and that's even on a holiday. Uh, so we lost a deal because of the 4th of July last year fell on that Tuesday and it was just a whole mess. But um, <clears throat> so public public records, county clerk's office, uh, we went online and just self-taught, man. I mean, you know, taking any any term I didn't know, throwing it in Google and just explaining founding on that term until I really knew it. What is a trustee? What is a grantor? What is a grantee? Warranty deed? All these other things. So I'm um, just sitting there on the computer and just teaching ourselves, knowing, figuring out what's, you know, what is this really looking like? What is the situation? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And do you, are you pulling this data? Who do you have pulling this data? Are you, are, does it just come into your inbox and like an email? You subscribe to some service? Like how do you get it? Yeah. So, well, so, I mean, initially it, it was, it was us, right? It was me. I mean, we were putting in all the legwork, uh, but we've, we've grown since then. We have VAs uh, and um, you know, we've taught them how to go into different counties and pull records. You awesome. know, um, we've, we've, they, they are basically data miners and yeah, the, the Excel spreadsheets get, get populated. They get sent over to get skipped. They come back. Uh, another VA receives that document slices it up into regions into mojo mm -hmm. and, uh we have um regional mojo phone numbers because if you're in phoenix you'll probably answer a phoenix area code versus a houston area code very smart yep so uh he splices everything up and then the cold callers jump on it and and try and take down some deals <laughs> i love it so uh what chris means by vas is virtual assistants uh, where do you find, where do you typically find the best talent for a virtual assistant that's going to do data mining? Uh, we went on Upwork. Yep. Uh, we went to Upwork.com. And I'll be honest, I mean, you know, you some people get lucky and find a rock star right off the bat. Uh, but we had to go through a couple before we found somebody that really fits. You know, they, it's, it's like they got to get the job done, number one. But number two, you know, you got to have them fit the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, they got to they gotta share your core values. They got to share everything that you're about. You know, if they don't, they're just not going to last long. And how do you know, um, do you post a specific job for these people to be your data miners? Or are you looking for people that already have experience doing data mining? Yeah. So on Upwork, you can like just type in the search bar, like, um, you know, virtual assistant and maybe like the word Excel or something, you know, just to hit on that. Mm -hmm. And boom, you'll, you'll get 50 pages. You know, you'll have no problem yeah. with the people you can reach out to. Yep. Yep. And then you just select whichever one. What do you typically pay a virtual assistant for data mining? So we're, we range anywhere between three to five dollars an hour. Um, that's the power of, of the currency exchange. Uh, of these guys are in the Philippines. Sure. Three to five dollars an hour is a very respectable uh, uh, wage for those guys. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. And what what um, what's your budget for? I mean, how much are you spending on these people? To let's say you're just in one county, what could somebody expect if they wanted to get really great data from a virtual assistant? What what could they expect kind of on a monthly basis? What is it typically? Do you know how many hours you're paying for for that? Yeah. So we actually have about four VAs now, but we try to keep all of them under about 25 hours. Um, we're just not about the, you know, the old school mentality of burning people out, burning both ends of the candle. Like, like the old school people like said that proudly with their, their chest puffed out, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like in today's day and age, like that's not what we're about. So we, we try to keep everybody under 25 hours. I mean, you know, pay them, you know, five bucks an hour, you know, it's $125 a, a week. Mm -hmm. It's about 500 bucks a month, Perfect. Uh, but, it's, but it's so worth it. Right. So you can, you know, you free up time to work on higher revenue generating tasks. Love it. Exactly. 
which uh, is setting it up so that you get the right data, the right information, and you do the most beautiful, the most proactive activity in our business, which is you cold call them. So you've got people making these calls, right? Did you do any of the calls or did you set it up with cold callers off the bat? Uh, we actually set it up with cold callers off the bat, awesome. uh, but um, I'll, I'll be honest, we probably should have done it a little bit first sure. um, because it was tough to teach somebody when you hadn't really done it yet. So we actually jumped on ourselves, right? I mean, hey, uh, had some bumps and bruises, figured it out, got really good at it, and then we started training our team. So uh, we hired one by one, uh, one by one by one. Uh, right now we have four cold callers. I love it. Four cold callers. And you, you made a very I interesting comment before that you said that you have, you're in multiple counties. So let's talk about that. Where are you at? So we're, uh, we're in Houston. Um, we're in DFW, mm -hmm. in San Antonio. We're in Austin. Uh, we're in, uh, my hometown is down south about three hours from Houston. It's called Corpus Christi. Mm -hmm. uh, love you guys. Um, and uh, we, we just recently started uh, uh, dipping into Phoenix and Miami. Beautiful. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what kind of traction and stuff we can, we can start uh, getting everywhere. And you're only calling pre-foreclosures? No. So um, we're calling pre-foreclosures and probates everywhere um, except in DFW and Houston. Uh, we have a few more. I mean, Houston, I mean, you name it, we got it, Brent. I mean mm – -hmm. Fire damaged houses, we got uh, uh, code violations, probates, pre foreclosures, divorces, evictions, substitute trustees, uh, people that have, you know, lawsuits against them where we, we cross filter them and we know they have equity in their house. Mm -hmm. The law may not even be regarding their house in particular, but yeah, I mean, just so many leads, you know, different variations. N not, there's the hottest ones are pre foreclosures and probates, in my opinion. Yep. Besides driving for dollars, that's awesome as well. Heck uh, yeah. But um, yeah, those are the hottest ones, and those are the ones that we've been able to uh, um, focus on in other areas as well. Love it. So guys, if you're paying attention here, and I'm sure you are, but the what, what Chris is saying is instead of staying just in his market, he is going to go with one of the top two lists of most motivation, most distress, most problems that you can solve, which is pre-foreclosure and probates. And he's going to just expand throughout the country. I mean, why not call on these, these people that are at the most uh, motivated? I mean, I think it's a genius idea. I really do. I love the idea. I mean, trust me, I've been calling everybody that owns a house in Phoenix for like, you know, five years. And um, I totally get it. We talk to a lot of people that are just not motivated because they're just, you know, owner occupied with equity or something. You know what I mean? But we know that when we call in the most distress list, the driving for dollars, the probates, the pre foreclosures, you know, those, those are the best conversations and we get such a huge bang for your buck. You're just a lot smarter than I am. And you said, you know what? Well, why don't I just stay in this market, this market of distressed sellers and just call them and call them and call them. I love it. I think you're a genius, man. I absolutely love that strategy. Yeah, man. It was just a theory that we had discussed and, and, and we kept thinking about it and talking about it. And, and you know, it, we have a saying and it, and it says the motivation is in the situation, not the location. Love it. Oh my gosh. Say it again. The motivation is in the situation, not the location. I love it. I so love we, it. we always, you know, we, we look at our lists and, and we're, we're not contacting people and their houses. We're contacting situations. And so just like Brent said, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at these lists and we're saying, okay, I could have my cold caller call a hot list for two hours and then the remaining of their shift, they're calling, you know, owner occupied, high equity, which is great, but it's slower volume. Or I could have their entire shift calling really hot leads across the country and making deals happen. And you only need a few prereqs. You know, you need, uh, you got to have a buyer's list. Yep. You got some solid boots on the ground and you got to have MLS access. If you get that, I mean, what's, it's 2018. I mean, what's stopping you from taking over the country? I love it. I love it. And it sounds like you're on your way, man. You and Tony are crazy. You guys are getting out there all over. You guys are going to be calling every pre foreclosure in the country. I love it. I support it 100%. Dude, I, I just love it. So tell me, give me some, give me some results. Like last month, how, how did you do last month? How did it go? Yeah, so um, let, me, let me just back up and, and just so we can kind of put the numbers in perspective. Okay. Uh, 2017, um, you know, 
once I quit my, you know, quit my job, I uh, had the bug, um, you know, it was a t definitely a, a, a tough conversation to have with my wife, <laughs> a newborn and quitting. Uh, but I had the bug, man. Like I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything else, right? Like it was, I just couldn't do my job anymore. Um, so I started, you know, I quit my job and thinking we had got another deal. It was a ten thousand dollar deal, and um, we were just thinking we hit a gold mine. And then, you know, there were several months where nothing came in. You know, and it's just like, oh, my gosh, what was I thinking? Right. So ultimately, overall, in 2017, we made thirty five thousand dollars in wholesaling fees. Gotcha. And um, obviously, I gave up a good paying job to do that. So, I mean, you talk about hitting rock bottom, man. I mean, I made every mistake in the book, um, but I really got tested, you know, mentally, um, even spiritually. You know, I mean, it was just rough, man. Uh, but 2018, I don't know, man. God has just blessed us. Um, <laughs> we started gaining some traction, started learning things and do's and don'ts. Um, and then, you know, something magical happened in May. And uh, we found a TTP program. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man, we have just exploded. Um, I think last month we did about $50,000. I love it. Um, to date on the year, we're at about 300 grand, but you know, I, like it, it's an ex, it's, it's, it's exponential right now, right? Like we're shooting for a 300 grand fourth quarter now. I love it. So, Absolutely. I mean, just taking this thing, you know, uh, nail it and scale it, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're trying to do, man. So you said 50,000 last month and 300,000 for the year so far, right? Absolutely. I love that bell, man. <laughs> I love it too. I love that, man. That is just incredible. So, and I, I, I absolutely believe, it. listen, here's the thing. As you're building up your pipeline, you've got more and more and more leads that are going to bubble to the surface, bubble to the surface. As long as you're doing consistent lead follow-up with these leads and you keep putting new ones in every single day, then it, 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 like you said, it's exponential. You just start getting explosive growth. You talk about, you know, like pumping the, the water pump and you pump it and you pump it and you pump it and you pump it and you pump it. And you pump it. All of a sudden it's just there's just water everywhere because you finally pumped it enough. That's where you're at. I mean, you're on, you're on a rocket ship right now and it's just taken off. I, I love it. It's huge. I, 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 I would be shocked if you didn't, don't do 300 in, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, man. I mean, it's crazy how the numbers like, look, man, we, we've, you know, TTP has basically 10 X us from 2017. I mean, 35 grand, 300 grand. I mean, that's about 10 X, man. I mean, it's yeah. just mind blowing. Uh, what we've been able to do with, with the TTP program. Well, it's just, I, I mean, it's, it's simple. It's talking to people. And now you've got four people full-time talking to them. You've got you guys following up with the leads, right? Are you guys doing the acquisition, right? Yeah. So you yeah. guys are following up with the leads. You guys are locking them up. You're, you're getting them. You're getting them sold. You're building your buyer database. I mean, it is huge. It's just all about talking to people. You can either pay for them to call you or you can call them. It's up to you. It doesn't, it's totally your preference. I get it if you don't, if, if it's not, if you don't feel comfortable being that like proactive and that much on offense and you'd rather things, you know, come your way, I totally get it. But uh, just being proactive, that's it. That's all, that's the secret sauce right there. It's just talking to people. It's being proactive, talking to people and, and, and putting a system in place that works, works all over the country and uh, you guys implemented it. It's up to you. I mean, this is all on you. You guys did the work, you know, that's it. Phenomenal. I, I love friend. it. You, you helped us see the light, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I absolutely love it. So with, with, um, I mean, I just think it's so incredible, Chris, because you literally like 75,000 to a hundred grand is the most you can make doing a CPA in that job, maybe more, whatever. But you know, there's a, there's a ceiling to it for sure. But what is, I mean, there's no ceiling to this business. This is a cash machine. This is a lottery. This is like incredible. And you've done, I mean, you did 50 grand last month. I mean, that's like three quarters of a year, you know, being a, C, uh, a CPA. So, I mean, I just, I'm so excited for you. you. You took the brave step, man. You took the brave step with a newborn baby son. You took a brave step to say, you know what? I don't want this life. I don't want to be stuck in this job. I want to own my own business. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be able to create the financial freedom to, to get into wholesaling. That is the, a lot, it is hitting the lottery. It is literally a cash machine. And then now you're off and running to build assets and be financially free, brother. I love it. 
Absolutely, Brandon. I, I mean, I just want to take a second and, you know, let everybody know, like, you know, we're, we're no different than anybody else. I mean, we have, you know, similar bills, expenses, everything, right? And, and, and man, it's crazy, Brent. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would never discourage from somebody from going and, and getting an education, getting a, a pretty good paying job. But being a CPA is a pretty good paying job, right? But I mean, you crunch the numbers, man. You talk about two daycare bills, which mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You talk about a mortgage. You talk about car payments. You talk about groceries and all the other bills that come with it. You, you, you go, you run out of money very quickly on a relatively comfortable paycheck. Yep. So I, I just remember sitting there, Brent, before I made this decision, of course, I did a lot of, you know, soul searching, praying and talking with my wife, but I just could not believe that I had spent the last eight years of my life for a, for a job that wasn't going to allow me to live the kind of life I wanted to live, yep. you know, and, and, and a 3% raise every year is not life changing. You know, I mean, you're barely keeping up with inflation, your purchasing power at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm going to geek out on the numbers with you, but you know, <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're not, you know, I, I told my wife, I want life changing money. Yep. And, and that's what wholesaling has allowed to do for us. Absolutely. I love it. And it's just, I mean, you're just, you're, you're, you're off and running, man. It's going to be bananas what happens in the next 12 months. I'll tell you that. It's going to be exciting to watch. So what is your superpower? What's your superpower? I like asking that question. I mean, it kind of makes you get introspective a little bit and kind of go, yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, what, what am I the best at? What am I, what is my superpower in this business? What, what do you think your superpower is? Um, you know, Brent, honestly, I would, I would say my superpower is giving other people superpowers. I love it. Expand well, on I mean, that. That man is, is making those around me better. You know, uh, via even even just people I talk to, but like my team, I mean, we have, you know, weekly meetings, we have daily meetings, just, you know, certain things. Um, but I like taking people who are sixes, sevens and eights and turning them in, into tens at what they do, mm -hmm. whether that's a cold caller, whether that's an, an acquisition manager, whether that's a data miner, whatever it is like, I want them to have growth. I want them to improve themselves. Um, you know, to just grow, right? And, and, and in order to do that, you got to, you know, there, there's a uh, there's a book, uh, Phil Jackson, Phil Jackson wrote, uh, you're, a, hey, by the way, those 11s are silky, man. I like, <laughs> I like those, man. <laughs> He's referring uh, to my uh, birthday gift uh, that I bought myself, the Jordan 11s, yes. Yeah, uh, so, so uh, sorry, the, uh, Phil Jackson wrote a book, it's called uh, 11 Rings, uh, The Soul of Success. Mm -hmm. He just talks about, you know, all the success he's experienced and, you know, the Bulls in the 90. And he was famous for implementing the triangle offense. I won't get into detail about basketball, but uh, basically they asked him, you know, why do you think this was so successful for you? And if I had to sum it up in one word, it's empowerment. Mm -hmm. Basically, most coaches are going to say, you got to run here, 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 here. You have to go here. There's no thinking involved. Phil Jackson took that and flipped it on its head, right? And he told people, he told his players, when you have the ball, there, you have to analyze the situation, and I'm giving you the power to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to property, a, properly analyze that situation. And here's here's a, a another nugget for everybody, okay? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take logic, and I'm going to flip it on its head here. You have to give up control in order to gain control. And, and what I mean by that is you have to empower your team mm -hmm. in order to do best what they have to do. And then that's when you can truly experience that financial freedom. I mean, it's been a total game changer for us to really focus on improving our team and making those guys better. And, and I mean, you can imagine the loyalty and faithfulness and, and gratefulness that these guys feel for feeling like they're becoming a better version of themselves. Yep. Oh, I mean, it's just so empowering the team, Brent, giving people the superpowers that they need to become tens. I love that, man. I love that because I think, you know, you know, when we first start hiring people, when we start first start managing it, it's like they need to do their job. They need to get this done. We need to get deals done. They need to call these people. They need to do all these things. And what you're saying is you're empowering them to want to do that. You're empowering them to grow the company. You're empowering them because they're part of something special, that there is something bigger than just themselves, their paychecks, their everything that's going on. 
out. And if they buy into that, all those other things get taken care of. It is so huge. I'm telling you, that community, that family feel to the business is unbelievable. And it, and it returns... Uh, dividends forever. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Once it's there, it's there. So uh, I love that you said that. So yeah, it's not it's not lin it's not linear. You know, you don't you don't put one unit into your team and you get one unit out. You get ten units out of your team. That's it. You know, and and we you know Tony and I always say you know we're really good at putting people at what they're best at doing. Right. I mean, if you judge a fish at how well he climbs a tree, he's gonna think he's an idiot his whole life. Yeah. Right. Is that and, Einstein? People in the in the in the right positions and, and what they can become tens at has also been pivotal for us. Yep. Two yep. millimeter tweaks, right? That's what Tony Robbins says. Two millimeter tweaks and, and you're on your way. You're on your way. I love it. I love it, man. And, you know, just before we get out of here, let's just say that you're sitting down, you're you're face to face with somebody that's brand new. I'm sure you've done this. And they're like, what do I do first? What would you suggest to them if they're brand new, they want to get into this business, they want to make a change, what do they do first? Um, if they're just starting out, Brent, I, I would, you know, do I would recommend what we did. You know, go buy yourself some yellow pads, go buy yourself some envelopes, go buy yourself some stamps and some pens, stretch out your finger muscles and get to writing. Sent, drop those bad boys in the mail. If you don't even have money for that, because I don't want to leave any excuses for anybody not to do anything, Brent. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me you don't even have that, go door knock. Yeah. It's to get into these counties, find the pre-foreclosures, find the addresses, get your butt in gear, go to the house, knock on the door. It's an instant appointment. Um, you know, and, and, and see what kind of deals you can make of it. So I'm not going to let anybody off the hook. Even if you have zero dollars, you can make money in this business. And I want to share something that, um, my spiritual mentor, uh, kind of told me here recently and, and it's really had me kind of resonated with me and I want to just share it with everybody. So it's another nugget for everybody. Um, you know, he, he, he said, you know, everybody always prays for clarity, you know, show me the path. I need a clear path. He said, you need to pray for courage. And he said, pray for courage, because if you have the courage to walk in an unknown area, in a dark, you know, you, it's dark and you can't see the clear path yet, you will find it. Because the answer is not always going to be laid out right in front of you. So guys, focus on courage over clarity. You won't have a clear path in front of you. I promise you that. But just get out there and take massive action. No excuses. No excuses. I'm not letting you guys off the hook. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Thank you so Oh, my gosh. That was just absolutely on fire, man. I love that. I mean, just so much out of this. People are going to be listening to this over and over and over. I love it. Absolutely. Uh, if they want to get a hold of you, Chris, if they want to get into your world a little bit, if they, if they want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, so find me on Facebook. Um, also, I have a, a, a Facebook group I created. It's called Houston Property Wholesalers. Um, uh, you know, we, we, I, I exclude all the, the deal postings and stuff. It's, it's not for self-promotion. It's for tips. It's for education. It's for what's working. Um, and I know it says Houston on there, but you know, anybody can ask and add and, 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 and find some value there. Also guys, I mean, Hey, I'm, I'm here to help. You know, if you need help moving a deal, if you need help closing a deal, you know, call me up, uh, hit me up on Facebook, whatever. Let's, you know, let's talk, man. I'm, I'm here to, uh, do what Brent did for us. He, he blessed us, you know, and I'm here to bless other people as well. I love it, man. Absolutely. Guys, reach out to him. Don't hesitate. Find him on Facebook. Reach out. Uh, if you're in Houston, you're going to be insane not to go to that meetup group. Uh, what was the meetup one more time, Chris? It's it's a Facebook group. It's, it's oh, called, Facebook group. Uh, I'm sorry. Facebook it's group. It's called Houston Property Wholesalers. Okay. Make it a meetup group. So I will. Let's get, get together. Work, okay. Work, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. And guys, if you guys are ready to start picking up the phone, if you're start try, ready to make an impact in your community, like Chris, like Tony, like their business, like so many others that you've heard on this podcast, go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP there. Just register for a call with our amazing team it, it, see if it is the right fit for you, the right fit for your business. If so, then I will be talking to you soon. Get proactive, take action today, start going. It is going to be the best conversation that you've had all year. Get on there at wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. And also I better be seeing 
everybody, if you are listening to this and you have not signed up for the Wholesaling Summit in Asheville, North Carolina on October 15th through 17th, you are a crazy person. October 15th through the 17th, Wholesaling Summit 2018.com. Register for it now. It is or it, it is two-thirds full. I'm telling you, we're in August. It's two-thirds full. Get into it today. It is going to be a group of the most amazing people that you have ever been around. Not only the people on stage, but in the audience, most important people that, that you can mastermind with, people that you can get inspired by, people that you can get tips from and ideas. And just like, you know, Chris and Tony, I mean, it's just, just be there. It is going to be a phenomenal event. Do not miss out on that. So with that, I'm going to conclude this podcast with, first of all, thanking Chris again. See ya, bud. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to say that I encourage everybody, everybody out there today, right now, sometime, talk to a homeowner, pick up the phone, call a homeowner, have a conversation, go to the door, have a conversation, talk to people every single day. I love you. See you next time.